A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Now among a A B C, but some are the same. Yay! <laughs> Say bye. Bye. Hello, my name is James Flores, and I'm Australia's favourite internet organist. And that clip you just saw before was of my youngest daughter Allegra helping me play with my equipment before tonight's recording. Yeah, and as and as you can imagine, uh, her name Allegra is derived from the musical term Allegro, meaning lively and fast. She's very lively and she's growing up too fast. So I'm trying to savor every moment of her childhood years. She's very cute. All right. Also, I'll answer the question now before I get asked about it. Is my glasses? I usually wear contacts. I'm short-sighted, but. Um, it's spring here, my eyes are watering and itchy, so I'm giving my eyes a rest by putting on glasses. Alright, there you have it. So why have I called you in today? The question is, should Bach's works be played with toes only? <laughs> Yes, no, maybe. All right. Well, let's let's um, let's see. Let's talk about why we're so divided on this matter. I'm not a Bach scholar or a Bach expert. I'm just talking uh, to you through my own experiences. So make of it what you will. Uh, why are we so divided? Uh, well, um, Bach's pedal board probably didn't have long pedal keys like we do now in our modern pedal boards, where it's we can play with the heels. If you've seen um, organs, like the really old uh, historic French Baroque organs, they just had stumps or buttons for pedals, so it was physically impossible to use your heel. Organ shoes? Did he even have organ shoes or heels on their shoes when they were playing? Uh, I think modern, I think modern, I think organ shoes are a modern invention anyway. There's organ master shoes, which I wear. Organ master shoes aren't the only organ shoes company around and you don't even have to wear organ shoes I know many organists that just wear shoes that work for them and some people don't even use shoes at all just plain socks and I admit I, I, I use socks when I'm practicing and I chuck on the shoes um, for a recording or for performance it all depends I, I'm comfortable playing in, in socks as well if I'm not using too many heels all right, so why why do people think we should just play bark with toes only? Well, I think the main reason is articulation, and I agree with it. I am um, I know I always say I play bark legato. That is my that is my tagline uh, because I've been accused of playing bark legato many years ago, and uh, it doesn't bother me and. I basically put it down to I play Bach articulation inconsistently. Uh, I just play it what how I feel and how I connect with it. I'm not too pedantic about those things anymore. Life's too short. So, articulation. Uh, using toes, um, I guess it replicates the articulation back in, in Bach's day. And the performance practice I prefer is articulate legato. What does articulate legato mean? Well, you make of it what you will. How would I describe it? Well, it's not stabbing staccato. Not all detached, but articulate legato. So, um, I will confess, I stole that term from Vitas Pinkovichus. He uses that term all the time in his early music playing and his online courses as part of his Secrets of Organ playing uh, courses. Articulate legato. So it's not stabbing, staccato, not all detached, but somewhere in between. Everything's balanced. On the manuals, we can see our hands 
um, articulating, whereas it's not so obvious in the pedals. And if you're using toes, there's a greater chance of it being articulated and not joined and legatoed and slurred and all that stuff. Because, yeah, if you're using heels, toe and heel, if you're not lifting up, it's automatically going to, to join those notes together. Yeah, if you use heels and bark in early music, there's a higher chance of the notes being connected or phrased. So if you use toes, there's more chance of this being detached automatically. Of course, this doesn't mean if you use toes, you'll always play detached. Um, I see myself and many other organists that if they're playing you know, any early music in bark, and they're playing, say, an interval of a a fourth or fifth or maybe even a third and they're using alternate toes um, they can still sound legato whereas if you played say from a G to a D with just your left foot the time it takes to the time it takes in between moving the G to the D is a natural gap um, and that's natural articulation so that's why when I play Bach or early music, I try to think of, you know, if I have a G and a D or a G and a C, you know, those big intervals, I just tend to use the one foot um, because I don't have to think about making a gap in between them if I'm using two feet. It kind of feels like I'm a theatre organist at in some point. But yeah, that natural movement between between that big interval is in fact articulation. All right, um, hope, you, hope that made sense. So should we continue playing Bach's organ works with just toes because he couldn't use heels? Well, um, in my own opinion, we should be less concerned with how we physically play Bach, but how it sounds to the listener. Is a listener going to know that you are using heels in Bach in an audio only recording or a recital you know without a camera or a pedal camera I have friends that use heels and bark in books to Huda and it sounds perfectly acceptable you can still create the desired articulation using toes and heels in this type of music but a little bit more care is required people these days are more aware of performers using heels and bark because of YouTube pedal cameras, concerts with cameras, uh, so we're just generally more aware of heels being used in early music. So in conclusion, should we play Bach with just toes only? Well, my personal answer is, my personal opinion, if you only have toes, then yes. And that's all for this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.